So never operate your uh, machine from outside the cab. Don't do that. Safety first, guys. Always safety first. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Got the excavator moved over to the next job site. Got a little tree line here that we started taking out and uh, having some issues with the excavator. Got to address that this morning. But uh, we got a small tree line here. There's some big cottonwoods like uh, that guy right there. I'm not going to worry about taking those out, but what I'm doing is taking these little hedge trees out in the middle. They hang over quite a bit and we've been kind of swerving around them when we farm. So just getting this cleaned up, making it look a little nicer and making it a little easier to farm. The issue I'm having with the excavator is I uh, parked it over there on the road when I hauled it over here, tracked it down to the first tree, pulled a couple trees out and turned. And when I turned, the track came off on one side. I'll post a picture of that right here. It was not a super fun situation. I kind of didn't know what to do because I don't really know much about excavators. So called a buddy of mine who runs an excavator for a living and he told me what to do. We got it back on. So what happened was the uh, idler pulley or idler wheel, I guess, what you want to call it here, it backed off pressure and this track came loose and when I turn, it just popped off the sprocket. So I think I know what the problem is. I'm going to raise this thing up and show you what we're dealing with. Got Leo with me this morning. Huh? You've been dying to go for a ride, huh? Stay out of the mud, okay? Get this thing fired up. Check the oil first. I haven't done that for a couple days. Still looks good. It's not even that dirty yet. I've probably put about, I don't know, 15, 20 hours on it since I bought it. had a uh, fun experience last time, or last week when I was running this, this, a little bolt fell off this latch so I couldn't open it. So I had to crawl in behind the cab in there through to get that open from the inside. That was fun. Anyways, fire this bad boy up. Oh, keys in my pocket. You guys want to see a cold start? Yes, you might as well. Not as cold today, but. Every time I hear this thing fire up, it takes me back to my youth when we used to run 4640 John Deere tractors that had the 466 same engine. Every time you fire it up it sound just like that. Anyways, let's get to work here. So here's what I'm dealing with. See how there's a lot of uh, room between the track and the rollers? That's too much. I looked in the manual and it's supposed to be 10 and 3 quarters inches from the pad to the roller surface up to 12 and a quarter. And this is way more than that. I had it in spec yesterday, but it backed off. So if you look in here, I guess I'll tell you how this works. There's a hydraulic cylinder in here, inside of here, that you fill up with grease and it pushes this idler wheel out. That way you can tension your tracks. This is where you fill it up with grease. And it looks like we're le leaking grease around the grease fitting. So what happened is that had a straight fitting on it and it was up and down. I couldn't get my grease gun on it. So I changed it to a 90, and I don't think I got the 90 type. So we had a different issue yesterday. The bleeder screw came open. That's why the track tensioner came loose. Now I didn't get my grease fitting tight enough. So thankfully I caught it before the track came off again. But we're going to clean that up, tighten up that grease fitting, hopefully get back to work here. Well, I made a little bit of a revelation while I was in here. There's actually three grease zerks on that, if you can see. There's one on the top. There's one below and there's one behind. And I didn't realize that because it was covered with grease, but after I cleaned it up, I saw that one. So 
I tightened up my top 90 because I'm not going to be able to use that one anyway, so it's pointed the wrong direction. I can get on this front one, but the back grease fitting, I believe it blew the ball out the end, which is this guy right here, because there was a bunch of grease that looked like spaghetti underneath, so like it was squirting out the grease fitting. So I got a new one here. Hopefully I can get it threaded in back there where I can't see, and then maybe that'll solve the problem. So, let's see what happens. All right, now the fun part. Got it back together, it actually went way smoother than I thought. Get this thing filled back up with grease. Might need both hands here. All right, so I had to uh, actually put a 45 degree fitting on that one that faces out because I couldn't actually get the grease gun on it. So now after a little bit of struggle and some choice words, we got it back together. Every pump of the grease gun makes it come up a little bit, so we're getting there. Wasted a lot of grease on this deal, but oh well. That's how you learn, I guess. I got it all back together, but now my issue is I, I bought cheap Harbor Freight grease fittings, and uh, the 90 and the 45 are leaking out because they're a two-piece design, so it's not leaking terribly. I think I can make it through the day. I think I'm just going to have to get some good, maybe Parker brand or something, grease fittings and change them out when I get those. But I'm going to let this uh, cab warm up a little bit, take Leah home. Leah, I thought I told you to stay out of the mud. What the heck? All right, let's bring you home. back made it back out here had to change my jacket because I got that other one covered in grease and I just washed it that was literally the first time I wore it after I washed it go figure gonna get to work here got a few trees left I'm hoping I can knock this job out today uh, just from here down to the excavator not a whole lot left as far as these little hedge trees I wish I was more experienced because I would definitely try to take these cottonwoods out but Man, they are big. I don't even want to try. They're not actually a problem. There's a couple of them, like this one hangs over a little bit. But we can deal with that. Another issue I'm having with this thing is these pins that I put in, when I put these teeth on, they're breaking. Um, where's one? I think this one's broke. So this bucket's pretty worn, so these teeth wiggle around and it'll actually snap the edge off. See this one, I need to drive that one back in. Yeah, I need to just switch these over to a grade eight bolt. I think that'll solve the problem. But for now, I guess, grab my hammer. The issue is, if I was just digging dirt all day, it would be fine. But ripping these trees out, it uh, wiggles those teeth around a lot, and it'll break those pins off. So I think I'm just gonna have to switch the bolts. All right. Just gonna have to keep an eye on that track throughout the day, make sure it doesn't come loose. Like I said, I'm gonna buy some uh, better fittings, I think. I might actually just have to put straight fittings, that way there's less to go wrong, and then I can uh, get an adapter to grease it. So that might be what I have to do. I think I'll be all right for today, though.
said it in another video, but this one has the same controls what I'm used to. It's uh, like John Deere backhoe controls or regular backhoe controls, I guess. So that's handy. slipping and it's already backed all the way off so I'm gonna have to do something about that all right 19 hours later we got this stupid thing fixed I ended up just putting the straight Harbor Freight ones in figured there's less to go wrong and then I had a regular grease gun coupler and I put a 45 degree fitting on it and then put my lock and lube on that so that made it so I can get on there pumped a little bit of grease in it sitting on the ground make sure that was gonna work I'm gonna fire this thing up, lift the track off the ground, and blow another tube of grease in there. Hopefully this will be the last time. Don't hit the truck. Never operate your uh, machine from outside the cab. Don't do that. Just running it a little bit to make sure we got all the slack on the bottom. All right. Safety first, guys. Always safety first. I can't imagine having to do this with a hand pump grease gun. That would be not fun. Here's my little adapter that I made keep that in here it might come in handy all right I got it back together forgot my tape measure and my other jacket so we got it close we're gonna roll with it let's see if we can actually get some work done today gotta move this truck out of here so it doesn't get smashed all right let's try this again I've used like 450 paper towels today and I think I'm up to four tubes of grease. That's fun. Hopefully that fixed it.
twice you're playing with it. I guess. That's, that's what I'm told anyway. And then drag it over to the pile. Oh, other way. bigger trees on this job. So here's one of the bigger trees on this job. They're mostly just hedge trees, so they're shallow rooted. They're real easy to just push over. Some of these bigger ones like this, you gotta break the tops off and then dig a little bit around because the roots get pretty thick. If you can bust them off, then you can usually just push them over. I'm learning to push the trees away from you or keep them on that side of the boom, like I said, but even then, this thing doesn't have a lot of swing power, which is probably a good thing because I don't mess up my boom. But even if it's on that side of the boom, it can drop over on that side of the machine. And this tin works in really good shape. I really don't want to ruin it. So I'm trying to just push the trees away from me as much as I can. Smaller trees, it's not a big deal, but especially these big ones, push them away and then dig the stumps out and then spin them, pull them towards you. Let's see if we can get this bad boy out. about done kind of forgot that I was filming a video got a couple more trees left to clean up and that's gonna be it for this video got a big one I dropped over here I'm having trouble moving it I'm gonna I was over around there I was trying to bring it around but it's just too big and heavy I don't really want to break it up because I want to bring it over on this side where the piles are at in basically one piece so I'm gonna scrape some dirt off the root ball make it a little lighter and then try to pull it this way through the trees See what we can do here.
the trees I wanted to, dug out and cleaned up, got them stacked on the piles. My piles aren't super neat like the professional guys, but they'll get the job done. I'm gonna have to come down here with the uh, tractor, the loader tractor and the grapple bucket and pick up like the small stuff here. Without a thumb, I just, it's like a cat. Just like when your cat knocks a glass off the table, that's what I feel like. I just can't pick up the small stuff. The big trees aren't a big problem. I uh, can get them easy, but this looks so much better now that we just got these few cottonwoods. If you uh, look down, I don't know if you can see my strips down there, but they uh, are a little bit past the cottonwood, so we'll have to swerve out a little bit, but at least we won't have to deal with branches dragging them. Yeah, another job done. Basically took me about two days. The first day I dug one tree out and the track popped off, so that day doesn't really count. Yeah, I'm happy. I've been wanting to get this done for a long time. Didn't want to pay somebody to do it just because it's one of those things money can be spent elsewhere. Now that I got the machine to do it myself, it makes it more doable and a lot more fun to be honest. So that's going to do it for this video. I'll let this machine cool off, shut it down, and figure out what I want to do for my next project. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.